So, all right. Okay, yes. We're happening. Now you're guilt. Oh, my God. Good things come to those who yeah. wait and persevere. Yeah, the phone looks great. Yeah, that does. All right. How you feeling? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good we time. We got them, guys. We got them. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Let's get down to business um, because we have a lot of neat and fun things to talk about with you. I'm going to put this up on the screen. We're so excited to discuss this brand new album that's that's coming out. People can pre-order this at robertfleischman.com. This is Emotional Atlas. This is an all-electronic album. The only guitars on it are some bass guitars by Chips Enough. My first question for you, Robert, is what was the inspiration uh, behind your desire to create an all electronic album and how long has it taken you to put this together? Well, um, it's a big story. Okay. Um, in the early eighties, I, um, started, I, I fooled around with, um, doing an ambient album. And at that time there weren't very many synthesizers around. Uh, there was the Moog and, uh, and the uh, Oberheim and uh, and some and uh, ARP, and so um, I had friends that had th that uh, those synthesizers, and I would borrow one here and there for a week or so, and so um, I accumulated a body of work. Yeah, and I uh, self-released it in the '80s, in the very beginning of uh, electronic music, pretty much. Um, the only person really doing anything really significant was uh, Brian Eno, at that time. Um, and who I'm a big fan of. Yeah. So um, years and years later, and I always wished I had put vocals on it. And um, so about six years ago, I just just abandoned music and I just been painting for the last six years. And then I have people and friends saying, hey, when are you gonna make another album, make another album? So I decided, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. So I sit on my couch and I plunk the guitar and I just said, I can't do this anymore. I, I, I'm over it. Um, I was just sick and tired of the template of music. I mean, you listen to the radio, you go to a bar, whatever. It's all guitars. Everything is guitars. And um, so, um, you know, I've had the privilege to play with some pretty outrageous, um, great guitarists. But um, I, I was just sick and tired of it. So I um, decided that I was going to re revisit the um the uh, synthesizer and uh, and build a body of work with it. And it's taken me about three years to do it. Yeah. And um, I've wrote probably 18, 19 songs and I've picked on, picked 10 of them. So. So, so, so you're going to have 10 tracks on the, on the album. It's, of course, it's titled emotional Atlas. Um, you also released a song called house on fire. It's great. Fantastic. Thank stuff. you. Thank you. Let me I'm ask really, you. Uh, really happy to hear that. So we were kind of expecting it to come out this month. Do you have a firm release date on this yet? No. Um, this little things technically um, are being uh, taken care of. Um, doing an album like this is very hard to mix yeah. because you're 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 you don't have established um, characters, like a guitar has a certain sound, you know, drums have a certain sound. Everything is just such a, a sonic um, over, overdrive of, of all these oscillating frequencies going on. It's just hard to capture it and not have it bleed into another one so it, it doesn't um, lose its definition, right. per se. Right. So uh, it's been quite a feat to mix this album so um we're actually just tweaking it still and uh i i i think by next week we'll just start um talking to uh to labels and and also i'm going to manufacture um a short run uh of um vinyl and cds and then um see where it goes from there that's now, that's exciting go ahead and I'm of sorry. course we're going to have that on spotify as well all oh the yeah it'll be on all the uh digital um platforms uh, platforms uh, a long time ago when um these platforms were in, in their infant stage uh you know you learned that uh you'd have to have a million plays to get 15 dollars. you know so i really wasn't um really on board with all of it 
So um, I kind of uh, opted out with um, Spotify and a lot of these uh, digital uh, platforms. And now I, um, I'm going to reestablish myself and get my catalog on there so um, I can uh, die and leave uh, some music, you know. Like Perfect Stranger, I believe it. I don't. I know there's a few, a bunch of songs on there. I actually listened to a few of them, and I really liked uh, uh, "World in Your Eyes." Uh, that was in 2002. Um, so many cool tracks on there. I mean, there's, there's like some heavy guitar riff stuff, and I was like, "Hey, man, this is like <laughs> right down the uh, the Vinnie Vincent type uh, realm a little bit on some of those songs." Yeah. Um they were just sort of a product of of the time yeah you know and what i was writing at that time um i've i've made several um self-released albums <clears throat> and they're all different each one is different from the other i i just don't believe in repeating the same pattern twice yeah so i i, I always try to make it more adventurous or different sure. production or less production or you know acoustic um, so I, I like I like to mix around with lots of different colors of paint. Let's say, yeah, sure, sure. And and I'm kind of curious. I, we've met Chip. We actually have interviewed Chips enough. Great guy. I want to know how you got to know him and and how you developed a working relationship with him as well. Um, I um, have known Chip for maybe uh, six, seven years now. And uh, we have uh, mutual friends that we uh, go to dinner parties with and uh, and little functions and all that. So um, we've become very close brotherly-like friends. And um, um, I, I just decided, hey, I'm gonna give Chip a call and see if he wants to play on it. So um, he, he played on um, quite a few tracks. Um, there was a one, one bass player I used, uh, his name was Billy Dickens. Okay, a uh, funk bass player for this one song that I have called um, "Name of the Game," so I had him play on that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, everything is all synthesizers, and well, uh, I recorded them all at my house. Um, in, in I have a studio there. Obviously, he's, he's quite a singer too. He's got kind of his own little style, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We we have. Um, Colossal times. <laughs> well, I, I know that you know he's he's got a lot of Beatles influence as, as well as you. It was that something that you that you listened to when you were when you were a young kid was listening to your parents oh, parents. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. I'm I'm old enough to be your dad. You yeah. Know? So uh, <laughs> yeah, your dad twice over. Um, yeah, I grew up listening to the Beatles. I had a cousin who was eight years older than I, and he turned me on to all the, the British Invasion albums. And uh, one Christmas, I got a Norelco tape recorder, and I would use that tape recorder to tape the uh, albums that I received that Christmas, which was Meet the Beatles, um, the, the Kinks, the Yardbirds, Stones. Yeah. And, I, and, <clears throat> and so I couldn't listen to them. <clears throat> when I wanted to, because obviously they were in the living room. So I would, re I would record them on my little, on my little tape recorder and bring them to my room. And I would listen to them that way. And then I would sing along with them. So I got to the point where I could really blend in. So I would, um, when nobody was around, I would turn on the albums in the living room and crank it up really loud and turn on the tape recorder and sing along with it. And then listen back to the tape recorder and hear myself if I could blend into it. And so I sort of got my ear that way. And then I I would get friends, little, oops, oh, get that's friends, okay. um, I would get friends tape recorders and I would tape something on my tape recorder, play it back, record it on the other one, and then bounce back and forth like that. Um, unknowingly, I mean, it was just like, I didn't know what I was doing, but it just made sense. Wow. You know? What made and, you? And I was like eleven years old, you know, wow. doing that. Eleven, Just twelve years old. When it, when did you start to realize that you had a quite a high range? Um, and what what you? Um, how old were you? Probably at... when I was around. It, when Led Zeppelin came out, I, yeah, I I, I I I could sing like like Plant. Mm. Mm. Wow. You know, and that's something with, so, with especially... it was really funny because before Plant, there was Rod Stewart. 
Yeah. So everybody go, oh, you sound like Rod Stewart. So, you know, as as singers came, you know, they go, oh, you sound like that. You sound like this. You know. <laughs> I don't want to get too disjointed on the the story. I mean, we don't have to stay in chronological order, but sometimes it's easier to do so. But I know we want to talk about the journey uh, portion of your life. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just go there now. Um, I want to, he and I are, we're musicians and I, we always want to pick our guest's brain about the, the business side of music, <laughs> which I know can be the dirty underbelly of all of it. But but you know, we know you wrote three three songs for Journey. You were a co-writer, Wheel in the Sky, Anytime, and Winds of March. So here's my question for you, without getting too much up into your business, I'm just kind of curious how this aspect works. When you're credited as a co-writer, how is it decided how the royalties are split? Because, you know, I would imagine that you do quite well with your royalties, but but how is it determined who gets what percentage when there are multiple co-writers? Um, well, if it's only two people, sure. then, um, <laughs> then it's half and half, obviously. Okay. If there's three people, it's, uh, th- uh, 33, it's 33, uh, a third. So it's so, that cut um, and dry. It's not a record company gets portions of it. And... No, no, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You, you guys have to arm wrestle each other. Okay. <laughs> but, but, um, but you know, uh, I've never had any difficulty with it because I'm always the one that writes the lyrics and and writes the melody and I and then they do the music pretty much at that at that time in my life. So is it lyrics and melody that constitute uh, the the writers writers, the writers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. N- not the arrangement. Okay. No. No. Okay. I mean the arrangement. The, 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 are you saying that the uh, car the uh, guitar chords are the arrangement? Well. When you say melody, I guess I'm thinking in my mind like a vocal melody. But then if you have guitars come in un- underneath that and they well, if they it's written on a guitar okay and, and you're and you write the lyrics and you sing, you get it, it's like half and half. understood. Like, okay you know, Neil Neil wrote was writing on the guitar. He was the bed of of the music. I I got inspired by the by the the chords he played, and I heard this melody on top of it, and then the lyrics came, and so it, then you got a song. Okay, amazing, yeah, amazing, and, and it's just it's amazing on how you were able to get in, you know, connected with these guys in Journey, and that I guess that would that started and was at Chicago where you um, had a booking agent get a hold of you and come down to Chicago, and you played into some some cover bands, and and yeah. then. And then someone like a manager or promoter in Denver then got a hold yeah, of Barry you, Faye. Barry Fay, and that's how you were introduced to Journey by doing, I guess, CBS a a, a, a showcase, showcase, yeah, showcase for CBS. So how, I mean, what were what was going through what, an eighteen year old head? Uh, you know, what was <laughs> going through you? I mean, you're going all these different places. Was it scary? Um. It was, um, sorry about that. Don't um, worry about it. Was it was one of those situations where you, uh, you know, you hear the guy uh, and it gets a part in a movie and uh, they say, hey, can you ride a horse? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can ride a horse. So it was kind of like that. It was, everything was off the cuff okay. completely. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was in new, uh, new territory. Um I uh, I just winged it, and I was lucky enough to have a voice that would um, sort of uh, pay off. Right. I'm curious. This must have been a special moment for you when, when you got to uh, do the Hollywood Walk of Fame with the guys in Journey. Who from Journey called you and invited you to be part of that event? Uh, we all got... Um, uh, an invitation, uh, a letter from the uh, management company. Okay. Cool. That's so cool that you were included on that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, really think that was the most terrific thing. Um, as a kid living in Los Angeles, um, on Channel 5, they would always have on the news who was getting the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame star. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you would see it all the time And you know, when you're a little kid. And, and then I was there. And I'm looking at all the cameras and everything, and I'm just like, I can't believe I'm here. You know, I've, I've seen this on TV all my life as a kid, and here I am. 
That's so you, right before Infinity uh, come out, I mean, you were basically touring pretty much, uh, was it nonstop with Journey after you kind of got on board and you did a lot of like, I guess, opened up for Black I Sabbath? Think we did and- like 78 shows, I think, or maybe less. I, I really, I, I don't really remember. Wow. Um, all I know is that um, it was a great experience. Um, you know, I, I got to play uh, Soldier Field in, mm. uh, in Chicago, and that was like, like 90, 90,000 people there. And it oh, was just unbelievable. Goodness. And, um, funny story about that is, um, they had, uh, they had the stage and then they had this big, uh, catwalk that went into this, went into the audience and on that end of the catwalk was my microphone. So the band is going on and here I'm on the stage and now I have to walk to the microphone do the on this catwalk and i cannot remember the lyrics to the oh. first song oh. and, oh, and I, each step i get it's like closer <laughs> and closer and my head is just ready to just explode and then i grab the microphone and i was like automatic pilot it just boink, it just comes and then it did the show you know but it was in front of the largest crowd of people i've ever did it was you know all the stadium seats were filled the whole field was filled it was it was incredible so special yeah. let me get to a viewer question Stephen swanson says did robert ever work with craft work no i never did <laughs> okay i think they're from germany i think I, th- wow. I think that's right yeah i think you're right about that well as far as journey i wanted to congratulate you for uh, having that song on their box set uh, for you i guess you wrote that uh 1977 yeah i did with uh neil mm. Yeah. I'm going to uh, jump, jump topics a and, little bit. You know, the funny thing about it was they wanted that song from me to oh. put on the Infinity album, but uh, I said no. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because well, I it... needed it for my album, you know, okay. that I was making. Understood. Wow. Talk a little bit about your relationship with Frankie Banali. We know he was beloved oh. by a lot of people. A great guy from, from everything we've read and heard about him. Uh, just share some special thoughts and memories of him, if you would. Well, um, Frankie was the drummer for my Perfect Stranger album. Uh, we toured uh, opening up for uh, Van Halen, um, uh, Sammy Hagar, Boston, um, uh, you, uh, I can't remember, an, an English band. Anyway, we did, we, we did a whole tour. And uh, open, a lot of it was uh, opening up for Van Halen. Wow. And he was just the most loving, great guy. And we always kept in touch. And um, whenever he would come into town, wherever I was, if I knew he was playing there, I would always go uh, see him play. So we kept close. Hmm. And um, it's uh, it, it, it's sad losing your, your friends. And... Um, yeah, I miss him. I, I loved him. He, mm. he he was just a special chap. He he was. We we've uh, he and Scott and I have seen the documentary. I, it's the one with the big long title, but uh, yeah, that uh, guy's wife Regina uh, yeah. produced that. So good. His yeah. his tenacity was unmatched. I mean, he just was a absolutely never give up guy, and and so beloved by the fans. And he and, was. He, he, he was a little samurai man inside of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that with all my heart. I think your story also with George Martin, uh, you know, the Beatles fame, uh, when he's listening to some of your songs and gave you a, a stamp of approval, I, um, that had to be some, something that was really cool. I mean, being a Beatles fan and, and, you know, basically learning all of their songs when you were a young kid. And then and here he is listening to you. What was that feeling like? I felt like the Pope blessed me. <laughs> yeah. And then I got to meet him a few times after that again. Really? And, uh, and uh, he remembered and um, I got to um, talk to him. And then uh, later on, um, when Kansas, the band Kansas um, uh, dismantled, um, they were going to try to put it back together. And they had Ken Scott, who was uh, the engineer for the Beatles, um, 
working on their new album, working on this new album. So I got called in to do the vocals for a song and or two. And I was just in the studio with Ken Scott and um, got to talk to him uh, about, you know, recording Beatle albums and all that stuff. Uh, nothing ever came about with, with the uh, project. It just kind of dissipated. But uh, that was um, another um, touch of the Beatles to you. Yeah. Wow. You know, you said um, when you were trying out for uh, going went up there, and I guess you had an opportunity to work with Asia and you go out there and now I don't, I'm not sure what the dates were on this. Is this pre heat of the moment uh, MTV days? No, that was um, the album that I was called to uh, come into was that album. Wow! That so had it, those songs. okay, okay. So, yeah. but that you, but you said that you had no idea, but that the songs were tuned down, and it it kind of gave you uh, uh, you just weren't connecting uh, vocally with I, I, with. It was not, not it was not the sweet spot in my voice. Mm. You know, so I hear these guys are like monster um, musicians, yeah. and um, and I and I'm just this kid that came off off the plane, and uh, now I'm going to tell them, uh, hey, can you uh, you know pitch it up another key or two, you know, redo, do do a whole different arrangement, you know, figure out how to do this, you know, yeah, and, and I just I, I I just couldn't do it. You know, no, and so, um, and, and, but, but, but the thing was, is I received the tape of the whole album prior to going to England. Uh, John Kalodner from um, Geffen Records gave me the tape and I listened to it. And I love John Wetton from King Crimson and all that, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I, I'm listening to this thing and I think it's great, you yeah. know? Yeah. I'm going like, what am I going to do? You know, what can I do to this? Yeah. And so, you know, time flies by and next thing I know I'm on a plane and I'm there and I'm with these great players and I'm just, and I'm, I, I just can't, I can't do it. I, I just, it's not happening. So, but the thing was, I told the management, um, I said, look, this, this album is tailor made for Wetton. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like you wanting me to, to fit in a tailored suit for him and, and have it fit to me perfectly. And that's not going to happen. I said, Wetton is the guy. Don't worry what the record company has to say about putting a front play person in front of it or anything. Just go for what you got because it's great. And that's how I left it. Man, I mean, that's an example of your humility. Now, there, as, as we were researching you, and I heard you recount this on another interview, I thought to myself, you know, now, as guys have aged, their their bands are tuning down. I don't know if you've ever have you ever experimented with trying to sing with that stuff now and see if it fits your range more. No, uh, uh, really? I I had two experiences once. I went to play with this this band, and I just could not gra- grasp it. And then I and then we had a break, and I said, "Are you tuned down?" Like, yeah, we're tuned down. <laughs> step you know and i'm going like fuck no matt no, you know <laughs> that's why i can't i can't attach myself to it I, I i just i couldn't and then the same thing happened again uh i uh fog hat called me one time and wanted me to come play with him and it was the same thing with that too and i just did and, and then he tells me oh well when you you ought to learn how to sing and i'm just like, like i wanted to get his uh guitar and pop him with it but um anyway um yeah so uh, I, I sing in uh, in uh, real tuning. <laughs> well, yeah. that's good because that means you haven't lost any of your range if yeah. you're still able well, to sing. I, st- you know, I've, I've, I have uh, I've had quite a quite a range. So, um, through time, you, you know, it's like uh, it, it it gets stepped down a bit. Sure. I mean, you know, you can't run the fifty yard dash at uh, you know four point three anymore. You yeah. Know? <laughs> 
<laughs> or here's the 80s and yeah, you can you can you fit in your uh, uh, in your pants that you had uh, when you were 20 uh, let's not even go or, there or <laughs> don't even go there man <laughs> go ahead so the honest. 80s the 80s were bombastic you know there was fire there was hair there was loud guitars there were you know amplifiers uh, everywhere and then and of course Vinnie Vincent. and then there was <laughs> Vinnie Vincent you know straight out of Kiss and he's got these songs he's an amazing songwriter that's who I, I fell in love with the warrior you know he replaced Ace Freely he was cutting edge he was something different something a little bit you know something a little bit more raw with Kiss and uh, yeah. people people fell in love with that and and then he, he's he gets let go or he's fired I'm not sure which is which but you know here comes the Vinnie Vincent invasion and we're talking about some high singing and bombastic and a chaotic album and I fell in love with it um it was amazing I love your voice on it it's just the way the guitars and your voice just go together it's just crazy but it's cool <laughs> And it's a it's a cult record, and and you, you it's know, a sonic uh, onslaught of uh, orchestrated chaos. Yes, it yes, is for yes. Sure. And and you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, like I know a lot of those songs came from from Vinny, you know, from his his Warrior d demos and things like that. Which some some of those songs went to Kiss. Um, some of those songs actually went on the Vinny Vincent Invasion album. But even some of those demos went, went on the, the second album. Were there any of those songs that were on the second album that, that maybe you tried out and it just didn't work out and then he just uh, pushed it to the second album or, or any, any kind of unreleased tracks? No, he had that whole album pretty much written already. Okay. So that was the body of work. There wasn't anything else um, attached to it that was on any other album. Okay, I didn't know if there was any any extra songs or unreleased stuff that didn't get put out on on that. Or uh... I guess the unreleased stuff is the one that album that he's been uh, promising for a century or two. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but uh, you go, you show up, and and you guys were you and Vinny. You were you know going to do this thing before he was in Kiss, and then you of course gave him you know, your blessings to go do kiss. You say you need to go do this and you're in an apartment with these, these, uh, twins and you need to go make some money go do your thing. And then he, you guys get back together and to work on this project. But then his manager during the photo shoot gives you a, uh, contract, a contract, or I guess first he went to, uh, Chrysalis. Um, I guess, without without you knowing or something like that is that kind of where the kind of it started with the uh the distance yeah, it's with like them? this we um you know we spent time together building this house and um and so uh all of a sudden um he sells the house and uh i uh didn't know that he sold the house and i didn't receive anything for my contribution to building the house Mm -hmm. And so uh, it kind of that's that's the, uh, the the tale. Wow. Well, I want to ask a, 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 a question about that whole saga, because, uh, you know, I listened to a, a, a Bobby Rock interview where he 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 kind of tells it from his side how he observed. Here's my question to you. We know that Benny felt burned by Kiss. You know, they gave him a contract. He says they're paying him five hundred fifty bucks a week and that's it. And and he gets this contract. I'm kind of curious, have he and you ever sat down and talked through, like, have you ever presented the question to him kind of like, uh, you know, Vinny, you, you knew what it felt like to be given a contract and an ultimatum and kind of uh, squeezed out. Why have, why did you allow the same thing to be done to me? Hmm. Well, uh, there's two worlds for, for Vinny. Mm. there's his world and other people's world it's they do not uh they don't get together hmm. yeah so he... i mean he was offered to uh, be with kiss he, he never signed the contract they they um they asked him many times to and i guess he never did um and because he didn't um he he came back home and he gave me a call and uh, we kind of um, 
put stuff together. And then later on is when he sold the project to um, Chrysalis. Right. And then all that happened. Have you guys ever talked but, through um, any of this you know, at time all? Time has gone by and everything, okay. and I always wish him the best of luck. Understood. Uh, I, I, I've, I've talked to him uh, a few times. Um, you know, we did the uh, uh, the thing in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I, I got on stage with him for the very first time we ever played in front of anybody. And uh, so, um, you know, Vinny's Vinny, and I and I know what he's like and what he is and and regardless of all the fiascos around him i i still um you know i, I still I, I still care for him you know I, I, he's he's like uh he is like an exotic animal <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> yeah. so was was bobby rock correct in that i i know that the studio sessions had to be tense but maybe there was a point where the ice started to break a little bit and things were feeling better if, if from bobby's perspective he felt like you were kind of warming to the idea of potentially going on the road and doing some shows with them but then you know george suet comes in and the contract comes in and it's game over at that point had that not happened do you do you think you probably would have gone on the road with them um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it would have had, you know, it, it, it would have had to been, um, I, I, I really don't know. I, I really can't say. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I was, I'm not, I'm not really in, I don't seek that kind of attention to be on stage. Yeah. You know, I, I go to clubs or go uh, to concerts or uh, see somebody play. And, you know, I get asked to come up and, and sing with them or whatever. And, or people go, why don't you go up there and jam and stuff? I, I've just, I just don't do that. I, I, I'm a, I love being in the lab. I love being in a recording studio yeah. and trying to push um, boundaries, you know? Sure. And, um, and so, that isn't my, I don't get off on that, you know, yeah. I don't get off on doing that. I get off on creating something, writing a new song, finishing it, listening to it, mm -hmm. you know, go to the next one. That's, mm -hmm. that's my adventure. That's, that's my, um, my, my forte. Let's say it's not really being on stage. It's, I've never really liked being on stage. It, it, yeah. It's amazing. Sorry, people. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing, though, well, like through all of this and everything, and, and he had to go and, and of course, get uh, Mark Slaughter for the second album or for the tour in the second album. But he, Vinny seems to praise you quite a bit, and, mm -hmm. and he always has. And he's never, he's never uh, slagged you, you know, one bit. Um, why why no, do you? Because I've been his best friend out of it all, mm. you know. Hmm. Just really? just a forgiving spirit i mean you just you seem like a yeah i have i've been, been very forgiving yeah uh, well he's fortunate to have you i yeah. i don't know i don't know how many he has but i'm sure he's grateful for you well i think it's an incredible incredible record and i know you uh you have some song uh credits on there as well what is it invasion and uh what was the other one uh uh rocks on fire no uh, uh do you want to make love? Yeah. Do you want to make love and invasion and great yeah. songs? What are, what are some of your favorite songs on that record? Um, I love, um, no substitute. Mm -hmm. That is a good song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think those, I, I love that song. And, um, and I like, um, do you want to make love? Yeah. And, shoot you, uh, shoot you full of love is a good one too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, uh, you know, for me, it was a chance. I, I never sang, really sang that way. I, I mean, I I did in, in other, you know, bands that I w was in, but nothing like that. It was, that one was always like on 11, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it was an opportunity to do it. And so I took it. And, um, and luckily, it was like a matching tie and handkerchief in the sense that, Vinny's guitar was just as intense as my voice was, yeah, you know, so sure. it, 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 it was a nice balance. It wasn't one was weaker than the other or stronger than the other. It was it was full on force of uh, something to be uh, dealt with. 
for yeah. sure. Now, uh, you know, back back on the streets, I guess that could have been a Kiss song um, later, uh, maybe after Lick It Up, but you, you had the chance to sing it. But then uh, it got covered by John, John Norm uh, from a guitar player from Europe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Have you had a chance to listen? Uh, no. no, I... I'm sorry, uh, they don't eclipse mine. Well, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I like it because he kind of follows a lot what you did on there. You know, there's some well, changes here why, and there. Why listen to him? Listen to me. There oh, you go. Well, hey, I think it's, to me, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, what's no, the Maybe word? he's paying I, I tribute. Of, um, there's quite a few versions of different people singing it and all yeah. that. Um, you know, it, it's... Just goes to show, uh, you know, Vinnie writes a great song. For yeah. sure. Well, your vocal on it is just amazing. You knocked it out of the park. So, you know, and, well, and you like know, I, I wanted, I wanted him to sing the whole thing. I, in the very beginning, I when he played me all his material and stuff, I said, you should sing your own songs. You should just do an album by yourself. But he just didn't want to do that. Mm. Wow. And I guess it goes without saying, it's probably not too likely that you and Vinny will ever collaborate on material in the future, is it? No, I think, uh, um, well, never say never. Yeah, sure. I, I feel you. I can't believe he actually wanted you to re-record the vocals on the second <laughs> album, All Systems Go. Uh, that, that um, you know, that was a... A big door slammer, no. Yeah. Do you think it, he has so much resentment of you uh, not continuing the project with him is why he kind of slagged on uh, Slaughter a little bit more than, you know, because I thought that Mark Slaughter did a pretty good job, you know? I mean, he had a he had a hard, mm -hmm. a, a big task, some big shoes to fill, you know? You know, um, for a long time, I had uh, mixed thoughts about... Um, mark and then i heard an interview with him and i realized this guy's really talented he has such a great work ethic he's um a very nice person yes personable um and i um and i thought you know this this guy's a really good guy you know yeah. he's a good guy yeah. and um you know he got the opportunity to lip sync to my voice <laughs> and um you, you know he um he did it uh but you know he was 20 something year old kid and and he go and somebody goes here you know here's the key to the ferrari you want to drive it sure and yeah he did so you know god bless him yeah, yeah. you know it's it's so cool that with you know with you are like a, a part of the kiss family you know and, and it's like kiss fans have a way of bringing so many different musicians into the fold and, and including some of the, the slaughter guys um you included you know you do these some of these kiss conventions you've done these vinnie vincent conventions you know you get up and you talk to the to these people you went and seen Vinny. you got up there and sang with him and then you also got to uh, write a song with gene simmons and it went on his his uh his vault uh uh, I guess I don't know how many he made of, of the vault where he would go and deliver them to uh, people and everything, but w what's it to you to be part of the Kiss family? Um, it's really, uh, it, it's a gift, you, you know, I, I, to be related to the Kiss family, to be related to the uh, Journey family, to be related to the Vinnie Vincent family. Um, you know, it's it's not like I played significant roles. I've played, you know, like, like a half a cube of uh, butters worth of, um, you know, being involved in it, but um, everybody uh, decided to to put me in the cake you know mm, <laughs> just yeah. i'm there so i yeah. really appreciate it and i'm um i'm lucky i'm a lucky guy yeah yeah that speaks volumes for your reputation in the industry i want to talk to you about the sky now this is a really cool project this formed in 2009 we were checking out videos for one day and boomerang and 
And uh, we were talking about him this morning. Um, Scott kind of felt like there's a Beatles vibe, kind of a George Harrison vibe. It, it, it's it's a George. It's kind a, of to a, me, it's yeah. a George vibe, Beatlish. Yeah. There's uh, a little bit of Zeppelin in there, yeah. and there's there's uh, some even like some Oasis. It's you yeah. know. Yeah, tell us about that project, how it came together, and I'm curious if it's going to do more in the in the future. Well, um, that came about after um, I received the uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame with Journey, and um, and so a- after the ceremonies, uh, the the band played at the House of Blues, and they asked me to come up and sing uh, Wheel in the Sky mm. on stage with them. So uh, I got up on stage at the House of Blues and I I, I performed it and um, I just thought, guy, I, I really love doing this, you know, being on on stage with this great band behind me and just going up there and singing. Yeah. Um, then afterwards, I got a call from a friend of mine, uh, a drummer friend of mine, uh, who lived in Richmond, Virginia. And he said, "Hey, if if you put a band together, I want to be your I want to be the drummer." And he, then he we talked for a while, and he said he knew some really great players in Richmond, Virginia. You should come down. So I I flew down to Richmond, Virginia for a week, and I played with this group of people, which ended up being the Sky, and um, and then I came home, and uh, my my wife said, um, "You know, let's move, let's go." And I'm just going, you got to be kidding me. And he goes, no, let's go. And so we, we went, packed up everything, went to Richmond, Virginia. I rented a loft. We rehearsed there. I did uh, two albums there. Uh, the one's called The Sky, which was very um, <clears throat> like a garage band kind of punk mm-hmm. rock kind of feel. Right. And then uh, Majestic, which was much more produced. Right. And um, <clears throat> but um, the material, those two, so, those two albums, I really love what I wrote at that time. Yeah. Wow. Do, so you, cool. do you see you doing anything with it down the road or was that kind of just a, you know, a phase and now you've moved on from that as well? Well, you know, I, I had to move from Richmond, Virginia. Right. Uh, and then I moved to Wisconsin where my uh, wife was from. Sure. And um, so we we came here. OK. Wow, Understood. got a couple a uh, couple things that are on YouTube. We're live on YouTube and we're live on Facebook and Twitter and Twitch. And the couple of comments here on from YouTube says, "Hey Robert, huge fan. I have a question for Robert. Do you remember how much? Do you know much about the Vinnie Vincent unreleased song Invincible? Your vocals on that are amazing. Really high up in the range. It's a great song. I listen to it a lot. Huh. Um." Maybe those other demos. I, uh, I remember. I remember. I remember the title. Um, I. It, it was way after all the, the fiasco with Vinny. Um, I guess it, it. It's on. There's Vinny's got the same material, but they're called different albums, like guitar. Guitars from guitar, hell. Yeah, and then uh, guitar, guitar, Maget- guitar, Maget- or something yeah. like that. So, um, excuse me. So, um, yeah, I remember the song. I remember the song. Um, it. Uh, that's all I can say. But thanks for asking the question. Okay. Uh, uh, Kyle Jean uh, Adderley basically says, uh, "How did the guitar uh, from Hell Guitar Magotten?" Uh, ses- guitar Mageddon. Yeah, Guitar Mageddon. Uh, sessions come. Oh, it went away. I'm sorry. Oh, here, I'll, I got it right here. Okay. How did the Guitar from Hell Guitar Mageddon sessions come forth? And did Robert have hopes that that round would have worked tour wise? The demos are amazing. If they were finished, they would have been out of this world. Rocks on Fire, Nuke It, Invincible Truth, etc. Well, what happened was um, he'd done all the music. He called me up, asked me if I would come in and, um, and you know, do demos for him. And uh, I, I did a bunch of songs for him. Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> and then I think he got a deal with um, Death Row Rec. No, no, no. So, what was the name of that company? Something Metal. 
Uh, well, it's metal, metal blade, metal. Uh, yeah, one of these recoil, metal, metal these force, recoil. metal force. No, metal. but anyway, um, they gave them a deal. We went into the studio. We started um, mixing the the record, and he just said, "You know, this stuff sounds so good. I, I, I'm I'm going to shop it." Mm. I'm going like, "You can't do that. <laughs> you you know, you just got money from this company that's." you know, putting the bill to do this right now. Now you're going to go do that. Wow. So yes, he did that. And then the, the lawyers from the other co- from the record company called the lawyers from the record company that he was with. And then it was an atomic explosion. Mm. Wow. And uh, again, you know, shooting oneself in the foot. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, and then after that, I, I, I just, I didn't want to have anything to do with anything. Sure. Wow. Sure. Well, I mean, just like I said, you're part of the Kiss family, and Paul Stanley, he he loves to do his art, and um, and and so so do you. Uh, you're into a lot of your artwork, paintings, and everything. Um, what kind of sparked you to start that up, or was it music first, or did you uh, paint first? Well, um, when I was 13. Um, well, actually, when I was even younger than that, I've I've always painted. I've either done I paint or I've done music. So when I'm burnt out doing music, I go and I paint. Mm-hmm. And if, when I'm through a painting, I go back to music. Yeah. So I, I ping pong back and forth like that all my life. Fortunately, I want to switch topics on you. You mentioned your wife. I know you lost her four years ago. You you recently put up this really sweet picture of her on your page um yeah, it was tell, a, incredible. yeah t- tell us a little bit about her some of your favorite things about her um well she was the most empowering woman i ever met um i um she had the uh, philosophy of uh, bread maker make bread what do you need to make bread you need an oven go buy the oven you need uh, dough, go buy dough. You need this, go do this, do it. Just do it and make something, you know? And and uh, I was married um, prior to that and I had the total opposite mm-hmm. of that. Okay. You know, you can't do another album, it's gonna cost money. You know, you can't put another band uh, together. You're gonna have to have rehearsal time and pay for that. And, this, and you know, it's like, hey, I, I, that's what I do, you know? Yeah. But anyway, Michelle was, the most empowering woman. She, um, she, she, she was a geologist. Mm. She sailed boats from Fiji to Hawaii to Hawaii to San Francisco. Wow. She was in Desert Storm. She was a sharpshooter. She <laughs> knew how to work a bow and arrow. She um, was. Um, an entrepreneur. Uh, she was a, she had her own, uh, um, physical therapy, um, company. Uh, she, um, God, she was just amazing. Um, uh, one time when we were dating, I, I go to the, to her apartment, knock on the door, says, come on in. I come in and she's on the, <laughs> she's on the carpet with this whole computer completely dismantled around her and i go what are you doing and she goes <laughs> oh I, i'm just putting in a new hard drive and i uh, and then back of my head i'm going that's the girl for me yeah, so, that's awesome <laughs> wow you know she was just incredible and i miss her like of, nobody's business and course. um and we have a we have a lovely daughter violet yeah and um and uh, it's uh, you know I'm I'm a, a single dad with a daughter and I uh, I try to do the best I can and I uh, you know when my daughter asks me things I try to think well what 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 was it like for me to be asking that question when when you know and I and I just think about it and I go yeah go ahead do it you know <laughs> so um, it's. Uh, it's just a piece of her magic that she left behind for me. So amazing. Well, we're, we're sorry for your loss, but I, I, I know she was amazing and I'm, I'm so glad that you uh, had the pr- privilege and pleasure of being with her all those years. So, yeah, me too. She was the best. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, um, 
uh, when she was passing, um, I would sit in this chair and I would hold her hand. And so uh, she, she would said to me, you know, when I go, I, I want you to move. And I, I said, oh, I'm not going to move. And then finally, after three months or so, I had to move. I was going cuckoo. Sure. So I, so she left me, left me uh, a list of houses to look at. And every house that I looked at had a body of water next to it. Wow. So one had a little creek going through it. Another one had a little pond. Another one was built around um, this man-made lake. And uh, and then uh, and then there was the house that was across the street from Lake Michigan. Yeah. So um, I saw the house on the, that was on Lake Michigan, and uh, I, I really loved it. And I went home and I made dinner. And I come back and I decided to take a walk in front of the house. And and I'm the house is right on the strand, and you can walk and go down to the beach. And so it was at nighttime, and it was just hearing the water and doing this walk and i just felt like this is like therapeutic i just I, i'm gonna take i want the i want the house yeah. so i'm i'm walking back to my car i noticed that the the um um the street is called mich is michigan so there it is m-i-c-h michelle um oh. th my address was 27 20. she died at 47. It has five bedrooms. My numerology numbers are five. Boom. It was just like all wow. this stuff just in a row. And, you know, it's like when people pass, they're always with you. You just got to learn how to read the signs. Yeah, I agree. They're always with you. There's always little signs here and there. Mm. It's just, it's incredible. You know, once you kind of like open up that little door inside of you to uh, recognize so awesome man and anyway Ooh. so so when i decided to do the album emotional atlas and i bought all these synth, synth gear and i had my whole room set up i needed a chair i grabbed the chair that i used to sit with her and hold her hand in and i wrote the entire album sitting in that chair and the first song that i wrote was like it was completely channeled by her God. completely and the whole album is like that Oh my God! I, I, it's it's uh, you know I, I don't want to bring a spooky side to it, but it's no, not no. spooky. It's it's no. very it's, it's very godly. Absolutely. And, um, and um, emotional atlas is like an emotional map of your emotions. So when you say you're the house on fire, and she's the uh, was it kerosene? Caris fuel I, I, to yeah yeah the fuel to the fire. Is yeah. that about? I'm. Is that about her? It, 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 they're all about her in one way or another, and there's poetic freedom too. Man, wow. well, wow. we we definitely that that's kind of a perfect uh, bringing this thing full circle. Yeah, um, I do have one more thing. Okay, please let me let you get to that. We've already been on with an for an hour. We appreciate your time, but yeah, Scott, go ahead. So, so you've done so many amazing projects, and and you're so fortunate to write some amazing songs with some amazing talent out there do you have any any regrets or you feel sad about some of them that you didn't go further further along with they were kind of a you know some short short uh, uh spans spans you know for each one of these yeah but you know it's like a battery you know you, you get charged here and you get charged there and you get charged there and you're you're you just become this battery of uh of uh energy so yeah. i i've got I, each project that i've ever been involved in i've always gotten tenfold energy from each project i went mm -hmm. into um even if i didn't pr complete the job or i got only involved in it for a little bit or whatever it might be it's all it, it all it just always charged me to make me uh to give me more confidence and to make me continue and and to explore music you know mm -hmm. um i i i i approach music in a in a kind of a funny way i i, I approach it more like a painter you know i like vinnie vincent it was like you know getting a big bucket of paint and just throwing it against the, the canvas and see what happens you know yeah. it's that kind of approach yeah right 
Well, the album and, is, and, a... and I just don't, and I, and I, I, I love, I love it when bands are um, adventurous. Um, you know, a lot of bands they get their first album, the second album they try to repeat the first one. No, don't repeat the first one. Try to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, you got nothing to lose. I know you're getting ready to release this, but you're such a creative guy. I have to ask, do you already have the next album in mind as far as a genre, what you want to cover, what you want to do? Um, in, a, in a little ways, yes. I've been really getting into um, drum and bass, mm. you know, drum and bass rhythms. Yeah. And uh, I, I've been listening to a lot of uh, kind of... Um, jazz yeah kind of a uh, progressive jazz yeah so i've been thinking possibly of like putting drum and bass and um progressive jazz and use that to um as my palette to compose songs and sing over exciting well we don't so want it it's 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 kind of out there abstract but you know somebody's got to do it i asked that because i i had the sense that there is there are no plans to slow down on on your your creations and that's exciting news and let, let's again put this up because i want to drive this home to everybody watching go get this album pre-order at robertfleischman.com emotional atlas what we've heard off of it already is amazing i know the whole thing is going to be amazing scott do you have anything else before we let him go well no i don't but i i well actually You've always been a, a well-dressed individual. You've always dressed well. <laughs> where where do you get your drive and, and your your sense of clothing, your sense of uh, fashion? Fashion, because you've always dressed really well. Sharp. And, and 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 the journey thing. You know, we were kind of like having an argument which one you were in there, and, and I was like, oh. "Well, he's the one in the suit, I believe, uh -huh. with 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 the tie." Yeah, well, when I was born, they asked my mom if they want him with or without a suit. <laughs> I'm trying to find that. Okay. Yet, yeah, hey, so, well, let me... you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I, I'm a kid from, uh, uh, from the, uh, the, the uh, British invasion, and I always like mod clothes. As always, like a, a mod uh, all my life, even to this day and age. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've always, um, you know, I always love a three-button coat and uh, and uh, and nice trousers. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I've always liked, um, you know, suits, I guess. I, I, I go somewhere and I'm wearing jeans and I'm wearing a t-shirt and I got a coat on and they, they just go, God, you look so good. I go, I've just got <laughs> jeans on and a coat and a t-shirt. Give me a break. I you mean, know? you're so, right. You're right next to Neil and he's wearing like a flannel shirt. Yeah. I mean, I mean this is you in the middle, right? Well, he, he just got through doing my yard work. <laughs> <laughs> Picked up your groceries for you, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so great. Oh, man, you're the best. Well, we we so appreciate This was so worth fighting through the technical difficulties. I knew it was going to be good. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Everyone, please go out and pre-order Emotional Atlas at robertfleischman.com. Yeah. Another thing is um, I'm going to probably have um, all the rest of my catalog available also. Oh, great. Okay. So all my, all my other CDs. Uh, I'll, I'll probably um, sell it over Amazon. Okay. So so I'm going to have it all situate, you know, set up on Amazon, and then I'll have um, Emotional Atlas. Then I'll have uh, all the other um, CDs that I've done also okay. on there. Well, we'll be watching for that. So and then you can buy a you can I'll, you can do a bundle or or individual or whatever. Okay. So I. Uh, finally getting to all this stuff I that I have ignored immensely for many years but I, I think it's time to get myself working up. yeah I mean it it's the way of the world now you got to get that stuff yeah. out there online but, yeah uh, yeah absolutely yeah. And, and I thank you very much for um having me share my story with you guys yeah, absolutely and, uh, and, and a real pleasure thank and, you and um and God bless you guys and uh, and your families yeah, so, so you take care there's plenty of people in the chat room that has some yes. questions and comments about. Oh, yeah. let's, uh, let's, 
you know, oh. I, no, 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 no. I'm just saying if you wanted to go back there and read them or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I can read them now too. Um, but I was just going to say if you wanted to, uh, you know, share this on your page or whatever, and, and let uh, some of your fans uh, can get yeah, on you and, just and give, you just give me the link and uh, and yeah. we'll, we'll slap it up there. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. Elizabeth English Talcas says, you know what? You know what? Yeah. I want to say thank you for, um, you know, investigating me and looking at different. Oh. Um, articles on me and and being w- well um, well equipped to ask questions and and things like that. A lot of people don't, and uh, and thank you very much. I really admire that. That's you, that's uh, terrific. It's, it's so you, fun. I don't know how anybody conducts these without doing the research. I mean, like we've had a blast, and you know the thing I love about you, like the the takeaway that I, I take away from the last several days of research we've done is if people don't know you and haven't heard you voice your your feelings about your career, they might say, "Ah, poor Robert, he really missed out on some opportunities." But I just don't get that vibe from you. You're you have always been the captain of your ship. You've never let someone else come in and grab the wheel and take you in a direction maybe you haven't want to go gone and I really respect you I mean like you said the studio is your lab and that's where you do your magic and and we just commend you for such a fantastic career yeah well thanks you know um the the whole journey thing has always gotten to be so um convoluted in the sense like well you were dumped and they fired you and all that stuff yeah you know um oops but that was just because you had a different manager, is that right? Well, that and it was sort of like if you've seen The Godfather, uh, it was a Godfather situation. You know, somebody from the record company, CBS, came to Herbie and said, look, if you take Steve, we'll give you more budget, we'll give you um, radio, we'll get you radio play, we'll get you a producer, we'll get you more, more tour support, we'll do all this for you if you take them. Well, so it's called music business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened. It was yeah. one of those situations. It wasn't that, you know, I was like a jerk or anything like that. I, you know, I still talk to those guys to this day, sure. you know, and uh, and I wouldn't have gotten a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame if, if I were a jerk with them. Of course or not. Anything. Of course. You know, it's like prior to me, they were they were a rock jazz fusion band that played 15 minute songs yeah you know and then i i came in and i i was hired to be the pop rock writer and singer and i did what i was and i did what i I executed what i was supposed to do and i and i and i you know i I forged a new template for them Mm -hmm. you know and they didn't even know who roy thomas baker was i'm Mm -hmm. the one who brought roy thomas baker into the whole thing and uh, who who produced Infinity? Hmm. So, um, you know, I, I was I was like the stylist <laughs> in a yeah. sense. No, you no, know? I, and I came in, I rearranged the furniture, and uh, and they they kept the template. And thank God they got somebody like Steve Perry to sell the candy bar, and they did. Yeah. And it's a great band. You got you go to a show, you see three generations of people. You know, soon to be four, probably, but it's um, it, it, it's quite a um, it's quite a musical journey. Certainly. Now, I know you you recently or you you, you met uh, Arnell. What are your thoughts of uh, of Arnell? Do, do you like the uh, his voice and everything? Have... Yeah. Um, Great guy. Yes. Um, I hadn't seen Journey for a long time. I went to see. I, I went to see them play at the Greek theater when they just got um, Dean playing drums and they had Steve Algeri singing. And mm-hmm. I thought, wow, this is really great, you know, uh, especially with, with uh, Dean. He just kicked that band in the butt, man, mm-hmm. just gave them, just put the powerhouse into them, made them, gave them an edge. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then, then Steve had to leave and then they got Arnell and Arnell, is just a just a nice guy he's a cinderella story yeah. you know they found him in the the dreads of uh philippines somewhere and uh he wasn't doing too well mm-hmm. and uh you know neil saw that uh video on him and uh and took him under his wing hmm. 
So Arnell tells me that when he first got to San Francisco, um, he was going through customs and uh, the, the, the custom guy says, oh, you're the new guy for who's going to be singing for Journey, aren't you? And he goes, yeah. He goes, sing Wheel in the Sky. <laughs> So, <laughs> we wow. we tried to let you go and it just didn't happen because we're having that good of a time with you but <laughs> hey listen i was going to anyway, tell you i was going to tell was, you for the for what? the replay like the link we're going to see i'm going to trim this thing up so we get rid of all that technical junk at the start so it'll start real nice and clean but uh again thank you so much for your time we we admire you and respect everything you've done and please stay in touch with us so we can continue to help you promote things as you as you release well, thank them. you I, I i i will take you up on that favor thank you sounds great have a great night god bless thank you Thanks so, much. so much robert Peace. take, take care. care my friend bye-bye bye-bye so cool yeah you know <laughs> I, I didn't even know, but you know, Vinnie Vincent's uh, manager back then, uh, George Seward, Seward, was also uh, Ace Freely's uh, manager. So when he left really? Kiss, uh, he managed Ace Freely, and I did not know I that. I didn't uh, know that either. So yeah, I wanted to know what exactly were the the details in that contract were that you know, you know, that weren't wasn't so flattering. To well, I don't know how. Uh, what's the word how proper it is to ask about details in a contract but we ask some we ask some uh, personal questions sure, sure. don't we <laughs> he also uh you know back in the day kind of played along with uh, george lynch and um, that's right that's so, yeah. right well, maybe we can have him back on i i he's so creative i i fully anticipate him to just continue putting out uh, releases and he doesn't like doing the same thing twice so there's a lot of diversity there and it, it's uh, very interesting yeah. stuff very. But we appreciate each and every one of you yes. for uh, tuning in. Um, Seagull Rock Squat from on YouTube says ACDC equals show business. Yeah. Um, There's our girl Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Talcott. yeah. He's talking to pros at TMS. Yeah, maybe semi pros. I mean, we man, I'll have to message you. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll tell you all about what happened at the start of tonight. <laughs> we got through it, and that was a golden interview. And I'm going to trim that up real nice for the replay, so folks can hey, watch that's, that. It's amazing that we went as early as we did. I just can't so we believe can... it. Uh, it was a that was the craziest mess we've had in gosh, probably a year. Yeah. I anyway, didn't, I didn't we, get to share it like I wanted to. I know, to. I know. That's okay. We'll share the replay. So let us tell you guys about what's coming up. This is so cool. We've been getting some requests for uh, newer artists. When I say newer, I mean not 80s. And we've heard your voices and we're listening. So we have lined up these two very cool interviews coming up Tuesday, this Tuesday. We got to get on this one quick. Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 p.m. Central. We'll be talking to C.J. Pierce of Drowning Pool. That's going to be awesome. And then just a couple weeks later, Thursday, April 18th at 6 p.m. Central, we have Bobby Amaru of Saliva on with us. That Those are going to be two amazing interviews. And those guys are going out on tour together, right? That's right. Uh, they just announced uh, the second leg um, of a tour. They uh, released some dates, and uh, you know, it starts, I believe, April 4th. Okay. So two days after our interview. Yeah, two days after our interview with uh, Mr. Pierce, they will be uh, going out on a tour and doing what they do, rock and roll. Yeah. And they let the bodies hit the floor. Yeah. Let the bodies hit the floor. Don't, don't distort the mic with crazy screaming now. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we need to real quick, we're going to run through this real quick because we're running late tonight. DEB Concerts. I know the Lita Ford Last in Line show got canceled, but never fear because this one is happening Wednesday, April 24th. DEB Concerts presents Faster Pussycat with special guest Dime Store Riot. This is going to be at the Venue Shrine. Doors at 7, show at 8. Tickets are just $25. You can get those at stubwire.com. So make sure you go check out that show. It's always an awesome time when the Pussycat comes to town. Dime Store Riot's going to rock it as well. Thank you, Psychomo Filmworks. If you guys have any needs for a video for your band or business, email psychomo at gmail.com. Thank you, Dustin Little, for making our multi-stream platforming a possibility. If you have IT needs, boy, we sure needed them about an hour and a half ago. You can call Dustin at 918-640-0892 or email Dustin at okpc.com. You did everything that anyone else could have done. Oh, man, it was crazy. Do you guys want to have sharp-looking photos like the ones you're seeing on the screen right now? Well, get a hold of Greg and Jennifer Shipman at shipmanphotos.com. Your branding will be done right by those folks. They are top-notch. 
Do you need screen printing done? Get a hold of Todd at Identity Merch. Call 918-521-5660 or email Todd at IdentityMerch.com. We quickly told you at the start of the show, we'll tell you at the end of the show, you can always see us live or on replay on YouTube, Facebook. I guess it's called X now, Twitter and Twitch. And make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell on our YouTube page. We are getting closer and closer to a thousand subscribers all the time. We can't grow without your support, so please help us out. And if audio is your thing, Spotify, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, podcast, just get on there and look up Tulsa Music Stream and you will find us on there. You can listen back to these cool interviews. Yep. Holy crap, man. That was amazing. quite an amazing... Let, I want to check something here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's proof that stress does contribute. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, you, you got stressed out. Fly high, but Michelle. There's really nothing you can do about it other than just, you know, you can always, always just record the Zoom interview. Um, I, I, you're saying, well, how do we do that? But You know what? We can, but I'm... We'll take this offline. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, no it worked deal. out great. We love you guys. Please remember, like we said earlier, join us back to this Tuesday... At 6 p.m., we're going to be talking to C.J. Pierce from Drowning Pool. We're going to get the heck out of here and go to bed. Love you guys much, and we'll see you Tuesday on Tulsa Music Stream. Thanks for watching tonight. Good night.